All right, assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to everyone joining yet again another edition of Cyber Views Tech Talk. I think we can all agree when I say that 2020 has been quite the year. The pandemic did not only threaten the state of our health, but it substantially impacted our economic state at a level that we did not anticipate. Now, back in March, the government imposed a total lockdown in the country, shutting down schools, offices, retail, leading to the crippling of countless of businesses. Some were hit harder than others, while some actually thrived under the circumstances. Employers, business owners, and entrepreneurs had to resort to restructuring business models. They had to learn how to pivot, to be more innovative, and all this to survive the pandemic. Now, months passed by with a significant improvements in terms of the number of cases, but then our country was hit by a third wave. We couldn't afford another total shutdown because our economy was not in a position to suffer in a prolonged manner because people were losing jobs, facing uncertainty, a situation that called for intervention. While most economic activities have resumed, the way businesses are run have certainly changed. Today, we are going to talk to two company founders and a key decision maker of a unicorn company about how they have stayed afloat during the pandemic and the transitional changes they were forced to go through in order to stay resilient. But before I introduce the panel, uh, please do take note to our, uh, to our audience that we will have a Q&A session towards the end. In the meantime, you can submit and key in your questions through the Q&A box as we move along in the session. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our first panelist is Rickson Kaw, CEO of Uni Enroll Malaysia. Uni Enroll was launched in 2018 and is an online education ecosystem that aims to champion and enable student success, not just from an academic perspective, but takes on a holistic approach to include career and a student's life in general. The company has conducted online exam prep classes for SPM students, virtual education fairs, and has made available an instrument or check engine to check one's course eligibility. Under Rickson's leadership, the company had managed two technology venture funds, namely Teak Ventures and Asiata Digital Innovation Fund, with a total fund size of 120 million ringgit. Next, we have Muhammad Naseh Habizar, CEO and founder of Govical Sindran Berhad, or formerly known as Joan Parker Sindran Berhad. Nase is a telecommunication and mobile content specialist responsible for the setting up of Joan Parke, a homegrown uh, technology startup company established in Cyberjaya under the care of 22 local talents. They are an end-to-end -end parking solutions provider, all built in-house. They own several apps, including Joan Parking. I'm sure we've all heard of you or have used this app before, which allows street parking and in-building parking users to pay for parking by just using their mobile phones. And recently, they have even expanded regionally, exploring markets outside of Malaysia, including Myanmar, Thailand, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Our third panelist is Abby Azli Abdullah, Director of Public Affairs and Policy of Grab Malaysia. Abby is responsible for enabling national digitalization through strategic partnerships with government agencies and overseas regulatory advocacy for Malaysia's operations of, of Grab, known as Southeast Asia's leading everyday super app. Among notable projects that Grab has implemented include ePasa and eBaza Ramadan projects in Selangor, Penang and Sabah, as well as onboarding thousands of B40 entrepreneurs nationwide. Through the Grab platform, these micro entrepreneurs benefit from wider market access and increased revenues. So now without further ado, let's go and dive right into what it takes actually to survive a pandemic uh, like COVID-19, but as a business or a business owner. Now, the world has survived uh, several pandemics, but never had to endure such implications this scale at what we are currently uh, experiencing. My first question is for Rickson. Uh, now, Rickson, what have been some of your key discoveries in uh, staying afloat uh, during tough times? And while you answer, maybe you could also briefly tell us a little bit more about what Uni Enroll actually does. Um, uh, thanks very much uh, for uh, the introduction. Uh, so I am Rickson, uh, the founder of uh, Uni Enroll. Um, 
you need to enroll basically. Rickson, sorry, if you could move closer to your mic a bit. Can you hear me? All right. Right. So, um, like what uh, Nadia just mentioned, uh, we are actually an online education platform uh, where we build this ecosystem to champion student success um, from K to 12 all the way to higher education. So, um, three main things that we do, uh, we basically um, host the largest online exam prep class uh, for students nationwide. And then we host uh, also the largest virtual education fair together with uh, the STAR as technology partner. And of course, lastly, uh, we do this uh, matching, we build this uh, matching algorithm to let students uh, check how much scholarships that they qualify uh, and which universities can accept them based on their academic results. So uh, doing this uh, for the past three years, uh, we have successfully uh, given away about 20 million in scholarship funds. And also uh, these students come from, thousands of them actually come from uh, 130 towns uh, throughout the whole Malaysia. So uh, basically this is what we do. Um, uh, go back to the questions uh, that uh, Nadia just asked. Um, there are a few things uh, which, I mean, because of this particular uh, speaking engagement, then, then we started to look back uh, some of these things that uh, we have done this year or some of the things that we have discovered um, going through this year, right? Um, there are four things that we, we have actually like uh, put down. The first one is really, uh, I think when we are hit by this uh, pandemic or even right before that, uh, we have been quite realistic about what could happen or what is the worst case scenario. So, um, so the first thing that uh, I think the first dis discovery would, would be uh, to be realistic, right? Um, secondly, is that once we become uh, realistic with the condition that we are in, then it's time to consider the options that we have. Because now that we are realistic, we know that um, the condition has changed, then what are the options that we have to, to actually uh, play with, right? Then... Of course, uh, within the team, uh, we started to make decision. Uh, back then, the decision was made uh, based on the previous uh, condition, and now the condition is completely different. Uh, therefore, um, we make new choices, and those choices need to be communicated and need to be uh, explained uh, and also be reminded uh, about all the new uh, decision that we have made to the team, right? So everyone is like, align or at least uh, everyone understand the changes um, that, that we see uh, at different level. Um, I mean, working on different uh, part of the company, right? Uh, of course, lastly, is that um, I think uh, when this particular, uh, what do you call like a movement control hit, uh, um, pandemic uh, hit us, one, one thing that we have uh, uh, quickly realized is that we are going to lose some revenue. Uh, and, but we also know that uh, we have been known for something. So what is that something which we have been uh, known for? We double down, of, uh, we double down on that uh, and hoping that with that, we are able to uh, basically win back more revenue or grow that particular revenue and uh, hopefully with that can sort of close or offset some of the lost revenue that we foresee to happen uh, to, 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 to the business that we are running. Yeah. Rickson, uh, uni enroll was incepted even before uh, COVID-19. COVID yeah. So now uh, we know that the education landscape has changed. Uh, university, university students are now going through e-learning, um, you know, Things have changed, how um, we have uh, moved about on a daily basis. So in your industry, particularly, how has that affected union role, the change in the education landscape? Well, um, because, uh, let, it, let, let me put it this way, because we, are the, uh, we actually benefit from um, uh, this particular, um, what do you call, pandemic, simply because, yeah. um, the, I mean, people move online. Uh, we have always been doing things on online, but the thing is the, the industry that we are in is an offline industry. So uh, we actually take the lead to do things online while um, um, do 
make ourselves feel safer. Uh, there are certain part of the business that we keep it offline just for the sake of, uh, I mean, uh, it looks safer to do it that way because the, the, the so-called expectation on the returns, it's uh, more uh, within the expectation, so it won't run far from that. So uh, I would say what has changed to the business is that when everyone moves online, uh, it, it sort of uh, pushes, pushes us to, to move into the mode of fully doing things online and, re and, and build things that can uh, support uh, uh, the, 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 the need and also build new uh, capabilities that we uh, have been long looking at it, but without working on it. So that sort of like pushes us to, to speed up that part. So uh, I would say uh, basically, I should phrase it as uh, they push us, this particular thing pushes us back to the online track uh, yeah. that we started, yeah. I think globally, everyone was pushed to embrace a digital transformation or yeah. digitalization. We'll go more into that, but I'd like to uh, um, um, ask Nasi, now apart from the, the four key elements or key discoveries that uh, Rickson have listed out um, in overcoming a pandemic uh, like COVID-19, I think another important aspect is also collaboration, you know, to collaborate with others, to pivot and to, to uh, combine efforts with other organizations. Now, Nasi, you are in the startup ecosystem and in an ecosystem, this is an ecosystem that encourages collaboration. How has Govical uh, used this element throughout the pandemic? Nasi. Okay, so uh, thank you uh, for the question. Uh, so first of all, um, uh, again, uh, Govical, uh, we are leading a technology uh, company that we spoke uh, propelling innovation and also uh, competitive age. Um, so we aim to accelerate uh, smart mobility solutions uh, and uh, plan to be the first vehicle data exchange in South Asia. Uh, so we, we uh, push uh, to capitalize and market the opportunity on uh, V2X or vehicle to everything, uh, IoT and also SI solutions. So, um, so back, go back to your question just now, uh, collaboration. Yes, um, especially during this uh, pandemic, because of this is something that we, we never expect uh, before this. It's happened uh, this year. And uh, for us, uh, we are, I mean, uh, being a startup, quite a, a CEO of startup company, quite lonely because of, uh, uh, we have to do a lot of things and uh, we need to discuss a lot of things, uh, but uh, we are quite fortunate because of uh, we are belong to an ecosystem uh, that, uh, that we can um, sharing ideas. Uh, for example, right now, uh, for, for our case, we have uh, a group called uh, The Captain that uh, consists of um, uh, founders, uh, companies, especially uh, IT companies, and we can, we can discuss uh, about uh, uh, collaborations or, or even about uh, how to go about during this uh, pandemic. For, for example, like uh, if we do, for example, downsizing, uh, pay cut, uh, I mean, how, how can we at MD, um, discuss about the, um, the, the, the staff uh, expectations, the team members' expectation in terms of uh, moral, maybe a morale and so, so forth. So um, in, in, in our case, um, there are so many collaboration uh, we can do, for instance, like um, uh, a traditional events company or startups that normally do uh, events, but during this pandemic, uh, definitely there's no physical events. So they shift between uh, from uh, physical events into virtual events. So they can create uh, uh, partners uh, with the technology provider, uh, and uh, they are being the, the events organizer. They can uh, 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 do the events with the technologies. Uh, we can also see uh, other collaboration, for instance, like um, uh, a market uh, uh, or, for example, um, shops uh, owner, for instance, uh, or restaurants owner, for instance, you know. Um, so during the pan pandemic, people scared to, to go outside uh, to, to get for their um, uh, needs. Then uh, they provide uh, this solution of uh, collaboration with the startups to provide uh, an app, for example. So for users or consumers can order uh, their needs through the apps. So this is a collaboration between uh, the shop's owner and also another startup. Um, so um, in our case, actually, um, 
because we are focused on on uh, IT based uh, company, so actually uh, we can see a lot of collaboration uh, collaboration we can do uh, amongst the, the startups uh, ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, so Nase, despite the closing of borders, our skies are now open. But partnerships with international companies, with overseas companies, is still possible. I think you've done that, um, uh, Govical. This year, you've inked a partnership with a South Korean company, if I'm not mistaken. This year, congratulations! Um, you. Can you tell us, perhaps, you know, how did you manage to get there? You know, without meeting uh, face to face with you, with your potential partner, you know, how does a company founder navigate through the current times uh, to get to to achieve something like that? Okay. Um... So okay for for these uh, 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 the the VCs from South Korea collaboration actually uh, we are quite uh, fortunate because of uh, we had done we we are um, participate in the uh, base conference events uh, early uh, this year I think somewhere in January in in uh, Johor so we had a uh, booth there. It so happened that these potential uh, VCs uh, knows about us then they they fly uh, flow over from from South Korea to to meet us. And uh, they, they, they shows kind of interest of what we are doing. For example, in, in, we are doing the um, uh, smart parking solutions uh, because so happened that their partners also had this company called uh, Parking Square and they sold to uh, Kakao and they transformed to Kakao Tea. So, so they see potential in us. Uh, but uh, because of uh, on, on March, we are badly affected by the COVID. Um, so we have this uh, MCO and the communication stopped for a while. But for us, um, because we want to, to uh, gain the, um, uh, the momentum, so we keep, keep, uh, keep com communicate with them, you know, uh, update them in terms of uh, what's uh, happening to us. I mean, during, for example, March to June, there's, there's not much uh, activities because of uh, most of us stay at the home. Uh, but just after June, uh, fourth of June, uh, uh, when we can can go out, uh, the static, I mean, the transition start, start up again, and we start communicating again with these potential uh, investors and says that okay, we are in terms of the growth, we are growth more than hundred uh, one thousand three hundred percent from the previous month, you know. So they see this is a good traction, and uh, we we start conversation again and. Uh, and uh, they, 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 even though we, we had this uh, virtually communications, but uh, we managed to, to secure the deals with them. Uh, uh, part of that, actually, uh, we also had this uh, presentation uh, again, uh, virtually, for our potential uh, clients in Bangladesh uh, back in July. So actually, they're they looking for, for a smart parking solution also in, in, in Bangladesh. You know? um, yeah, we managed to, to present to them uh, our ideas, our solutions. Um, they, they are keen to for our solution, but because of the 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 COVID case still high high in there, then they they uh, pay, uh, they postpone uh, the plan for a while. Uh, other than that, the, the third uh, case that we had, okay, um, for our client in uh, Saudi, you know. So uh, again, uh, during this pandemic, we we had this conversation uh, through uh, virtually, and. Uh, we managed to compete uh, or to launch our second service in, in Saudi called uh, Parky, uh, which focusing on the um, uh, smart uh, valley solutions in, in, in Saudi. So we just launched it think, uh, last week. And uh, this has been done uh, throughout this pandemic and uh, there's no physical meeting, everything done uh, virtually. So um, what, what we can say is that uh, even though we, we had this uh, bad situation, but in terms of the uh, business, it can still uh, running as usual, especially in our case because of we are we are more in, in IT business. So yes. that's uh, yeah. And I say I think um, uh, partnering with local players is also just as important. I know that the community of company founders in Cyberjaya alone, you guys are a very close knit uh, community. Uh, you always talk to each other and you don't even see one another as a competitor. Actually, you know, rather you move as a single unit. So I think that's what's uh, beautiful about the CyberGI ecosystem, the startup ecosystem there. Now, let's talk to a startup which has emerged as a unicorn and is now growing immensely uh, regionally. Uh, Abby, I'd like to come to you now. Uh, while many companies in Malaysia have been negatively impacted by an economic decline, there are also some companies that have actually thrived, like what we've heard from Rickson and Nasi. Uh, so what can you say about Grab 
Uh, Grab has already been widely utilized even before the pandemic, uh, but what about after we were struck by COVID-19? Abby. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, thank you for having having me here. Um, I'm actually uh, part of the Cyberjai community. I was uh, I live here, and I'm I'm quite uh, familiar with all the facilities that we have uh, in 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 the city. Yeah. So when it comes to Grab, uh, I'm sure most of you know uh, what Grab is now. But uh, when we started eight years ago, we were just a startup like everybody else. And now we have grown uh, in the last eight years. Uh, we have about 20 million downloads, uh, 14,000 merchants on the Grab platform now, maybe more. Uh, we have about 100,000 delivery uh, uh, four-wheel vehicles, uh, the, the ones that do e-hailing, and about 20,000 uh, delivery riders covering about 50 cities uh, in the country. And our offering now has gone beyond transport. We also provide uh, food services, um, finance services, delivery, uh, loyalty to our Grab Rewards, insurance, and maybe later uh, uh, the, the banking and lending uh, services. Uh, as you know, uh, in Singapore, we've already announced the, the digital bank partnership with Singtel, and uh, this uh, will probably be expanded to the, to the region um, uh, gradually. But when it comes to COVID, it uh, Grab is, was also affected badly uh, by COVID in, in March. Uh, um, the number of trips actually plummeted from uh, from by about 80, 80 to ninety percent, and the drivers' actually, revenue actually dropped eighty uh, percent. Uh, Some of them even getting less than one thousand a day compared to uh, between four to five thousand, but. There were some uh, silver lining. Uh, the food delivery side went up more than 30% due to MCO. More, more people actually uh, wanted to order food. Uh, our Grab Express services uh, grown exponentially during the uh, service. More people sending uh, parcels, food, and, and uh, many other things. And what we have seen during COVID is that it accelerated the adoption of digitalization. Some say the, the digitalization actually accelerated by seven years in within the, uh, the, uh, the, the last couple of months. And, and most businesses and even society, they have to actually adopt uh, the digital process. <clears throat> and for us, we actually onboarded more than 6,000 new merchants. Our, both our Grab Food and Grab Mart <clears throat> merchants grew by, by three times to over 20,000 merchants, actually. So the number that I quoted earlier was actually the, the earlier in the year. So we have now more than 20,000. And the MOF actually uh, uh, estimated the economic value of uh, digital trade enabled benefits to the Malaysian economy could grow by more than 222 billion. Uh, in 2030. So in 10 years, um, this can grow fast between, from 31 billion uh, last year to more than 200 billion. So going digital is an important uh, component of conducting business from where we are, uh, we are sitting and will play a big role in the future of business. So how we see it is that uh, we, 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 we see digitization uh, as a key feature in uh, ensuring the sustainability of income streams. Uh, during MCO, e-commerce platform actually helped the micro entrepreneurs uh, stay afloat uh, with delivery revenue through, via our Grab platform amid dine-in and walk-in restrictions uh, due to MCO. And what we've seen is that um, uh, by our merchants, uh, well, Grab is used by at least one in every three Malaysians. Um, they know that being on the Grab platform can actually help the merchants grow. Uh, and the, the second part of my point is that uh, the transition into online platforms actually aligned with the changes in uh, the consumer's uh, purchasing behavior. Customers now want things instantly and going online fulfills that, uh, that need, whether they are on Grab or on other platforms like Lazada or Shopee. Thus, you can see the popularity of all the, the online platforms now. Um, thirdly, going digital enables more efficient data management. We are able to actually guide them on what are the, the products or the items that is more popular. The, the AI uh, on the data actually enables them to actually uh, plan their, 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 their whole process better. Uh, so we also provide uh, access to trainings and tools like Grab Performance Marketing with our Grab expert providing guidance and support in, in, in business. So these are some of the things and some of our findings and how we actually try to actually transform the, the, the way we do things in the last couple of months. Uh, where we introduce also some new features like you mentioned earlier, the Grab Pasta and Grab Mart, uh, Grab uh, E-Kitchen and Grab uh, Food Courts, which actually um, uh, actually touches on the B40 entrepreneurs, how we move them into the traditional businesses, uh, the digital businesses, sorry. Nadia. All right, we'll talk more a little bit more uh, about digitalization after this, but um, my next question is for Rickson, actually. Uh, we can't deny that there has been an increase in unemployment in Malaysia due to the pandemic. Businesses are either downsizing or even closing down. So this has caused actually a rise 
in the gig economy, uh, the wide practice of remote work. And we are also seeing a need for individuals to upskill um, in technology related areas. We don't want to dwell too much in 2020. So Rickson, what should everyone else uh, look for uh, besides all of this as we approach 2021? Um, yeah, talking about this uh, from the perspective of talent and workforce, right? Um, I, I mean, basically, uh, I would say uh, good talent is good talent, uh, meaning, uh, I mean, certain roles, uh, I mean, in a way, uh, it's no longer in need. Uh, therefore, uh, some people uh, uh, will let go, but um, all the skills that they have uh, can repurpose and actually put on other uh, industry that is growing, right? So um, like what I just uh, mentioned, uh, I think good talent is good talent. They are highly sought after. So as long as uh, individuals, they are more open to um, the ideas uh, of, I mean, basically they are more open to explore, uh, then I believe it's quite quickly uh, they will be they, they they will find the new opportunities uh, for themselves. Yeah. As a business owner yourself, I'm sure that when you're looking and recruiting for new talents, especially yeah. in current times, um, you want someone who is very tech savvy. Um, um, I, I would I would say uh, probably uh, there are a lot of them who are already quite tech savvy. Uh, just to quote one example, the moment you say that. I, it uh, recalls, I, I recall about it, right? So we recently just uh, hired someone that came from uh, one of the largest airline in Malaysia. So uh, they, uh, so she was in, uh, I mean, a little bit of sales slash cust uh, customer support, right? So uh, the, the thing is, uh, they are very used to uh, uh, speaking to the, the customers uh, through online, uh, whether it's through chats or through calls, right? But the business that we are in, uh, being in just one location in some way, uh, we actually uh, speak to all the students from throughout Malaysia, right? So we don't go there physically. Um, therefore, um, I mean, the skills that she has, despite the fact that she's not going to be the programmer whatnot in our company, uh, the, the skills that she has is it's, uh, what we uh, need, right? Uh, and therefore, uh, from the discussion, uh, we, we find that the skills are completely uh, I, I, I would say the the, the it's, it's relevant uh, just need a slight tweak uh, then a, a lot of these skills is already applicable to, to, to perform the job that we have here so uh, yeah I hope that helps. There, although there's an expectation a certain expectation from employers and um, or business owners it's also important um, as an employer or business owner that you also train and and provide access uh, to all of these new skills because digitalization is moving very fast. So sometimes it's very difficult to keep track. So I think this is an ongoing process um, for both um, employees and employers, employees and business owners, something that where we have to, again, uh, work together. Right. right. Uh, Nasi, now you are an alumni, an alumni of the Cyberview Living Lab Accelerator or CLT. <laughs> and until now, you are based in Cyberjaya. Now, uh, this year alone, uh, us over here at Cyberview, we've uh, seen the graduation of two cohorts during the pandemic, comprising of 10 startups. And while it has been challenging for all of them throughout this new normal, but due to the nature of the solutions, which relies um, heavily on technology, they have managed to stay agile. And I think um, all these three organizations that we have over here have... Um, been given an advantage of being in uh, the digital sector, using digital tools. So Nase, being in Cyberjaya that celebrates digitalization, um, how has the ecosystem helped you? Okay, so uh, first of all, I think I would say uh, thanks for uh, to Cyberview because of uh, giving us opportunity to participate in the uh, Cyberview Living Lab Accelerator programs. Uh, whereby during these uh, three months as electro programs, we, we learn a lot uh, about uh, entrepreneurships. And not only that, uh, we also given an opportunity to uh, pilot test our solutions. So uh, we had done the pilot test here in Cyber, Cyberjaya. Yeah? Uh, one good thing about uh, Cyberjaya, uh, why we are still, still here, uh, because of the, the um, Ecosystem. I would say the ecosystem. Uh, for example, in, in we are staying in uh, 
uh, Coplace 2 right now, uh, whereby here, um, for instance, like uh, uh, first thing first, we always think about our, our team members. You know, uh, here you, you can have a free uh, or ample parking uh, for, for everybody. You know, so, so they need to rush to the office to get uh, for the parking. And it's, it's easy access, for example, like, you know, to come to Cyberview. So far, there's no traffic jam. Uh, and also, um, because of, uh, at the same time, they, uh, we're also surrounded by uh, a startups company over here. So we can uh, mingle around, uh, maybe having for, for coffee, having chit chat, you know, uh, sharing ideas on, on, uh, on the planner. So, so um, for, for us, uh, we are, I mean, uh, we, we're getting a lot of opportunities. And uh, even, for example, like uh, there are so many events uh, happening around here, especially uh, at the Rekascape, you know, so, so we can always go there, visit there uh, uh, to get uh, more information uh, and, 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 and get, get together with, with the respective uh, startups company and also um, uh, companies, uh, other organizations as well at the same time. Now, say what would be your advice to other entrepreneurs, company founders on how they can expand their networks, get to know more people? I think uh, the most important thing is Lee, uh, we know that we, we, cannot, we cannot do it alone. Uh, we have some limitations. So the, the most uh, uh, um, uh, appropriate way, I mean, we, we need to collaborate. Even for, our, for ourselves also, we need to collaborate, uh, collaborate with other startup companies. You know, how can we uh, complement each other? For example, if you have A, maybe uh, the other company have B. So how can we complement each other? How can we sharing ideas uh, because of, uh, especially, especially during this uh, uh, pandemic right now, uh, we have to think of how can we uh, 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 produce more innovative uh, product or solutions and how can we uh, expand our market, not only in Asia, because of now during this COVID or during, I mean, during this era right now, we can uh, easily uh, extend our services uh, outside Malaysia. So, so for our case, uh, we are looking to expand our services within the uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, we have done it. We have done in in, in Sri Lanka and Saudi. Uh, so we're looking for 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 other countries in in future. We believe that uh, 2021 will be a good year for us. Um, so yeah, I, I think uh, collaboration is, is is the way to go. All right. Uh, Abby, now you, you talked about digital transformation and how it's the next big thing, you know, moving forward. While you're not a technology company per se, but Grab is powered by digital tools. You're using your apps for people to order food, to get their del uh, food delivered. So what would be your advice for non-tech business owners on the importance of going digital? Um, or for those business owners who haven't fully embraced uh, digital transformation, what would be your advice, Abby? Well, I think uh, for them, uh, it is important that business owners uh, uh, remain agile, agile in, in, in terms of uh, being able to uh, dial up the agility as a business leader to, to change uh, their, their behavior. The situation, especially during MCO, we can see it uh, uh, as, for, as for what what was announced by the government, the, ch the situation changes every week or even in some cases every day. It, changes daily and we need to keep our ears and eyes close to the ground, be quick to adapt and respond to changing circumstances. And that's what we did in Grab. In March, we saw uh, a lot of our drivers not able to actually uh, 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 transport people. So we moved 100,000 of them into the delivery site. So most of them, you can see uh, the four car drivers actually sending food and parcels uh, during the, the peak MCO period. And we also uh, uh, changed some of our, our offering in, in March. For example, our mix and match uh, offering was actually adapted to, 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 to showcase some of our PASA pilot projects. We started in Taman Tun, PASA Taman Tun, and, and later expanded it to cover most of the PASAR's uh, night, uh, wet markets in Selangor uh, uh, through a collaboration with Selangor State Government. And this later expanded during the Ramadan uh, uh, month because of the, the, the ban on Bazaar Ramadans, which actually forced us to work with the state government to create this e-kitchen Bazaar Ramadan, which actually impacted um, uh, tremendously on the people that were selected for the program. Uh, I, I believe uh, based on our data, uh, more than 60-70% uh, of them actually saw an, a tremendous increase in revenue, more than 200%. Some who actually uh, used to get about 3,000 a day during the Bazaar Ramadan uh, sessions in the, in the past can actually earn up to five to 6,000 by being on the Grab platform. So we, you need to change how you behave and how you move. Secondly, I, I would like to think that 
the most important thing for founders is to actually uh, be to be more practical and in making the hard decisions. The pandemic pandemic has been quite humbling uh, for most of it, even for Grab, and it's a reminder for us to be flexible uh, and to, uh, and of course and uh, to be an opportunity for us to adapt our business model towards uh, shared community and stakeholder goals. So we are, I mean, it we, it is important for them to take uh, the active and necessary steps to uh, to reallocate resources to focus on the right opportunities when it comes along. So it links back to the earlier ag agility that was mentioned. Uh, yeah. Maybe when the pandemic happened, did Grab Malaysia anticipate the surge uh, of demand for your services? Did you expect um, for it to grow immensely like that? Uh, definitely not. Uh, well, like, like I said earlier, uh, it was a mixed uh, situation for us. Our transport were badly affected, but our food and delivery side went up and we, we decided to focus more on the food and the mart side. And as you know, uh, recently we launched our supermarket, uh, uh, Grab supermarket uh, offering uh, in Klang Valley, which, is, which was actually the first in the region. We are actually using Malaysia as a pilot to, uh, to, uh, to establish a new supply chain network uh, directly from, uh, from the source to the users uh, by, by ensuring delivery within 24 hours. So this is our new um, uh, angle that we, are, we, that we saw might be an opportunity that was established during the MCO where a lot of people wanted to order groceries, but they couldn't. And the, the slots were always full when you want to go to the normal traditional um, uh, players, right? So we saw this as a potential area where Grab can grow. So we will continue to pivot and we will continue to see how we can actually change our behavior to adapt to the situation at hand. And I think I just we also want to take this opportunity to say um, to express our gratitude and say thank you to you know grab uh, drivers and uh, delivery persons. I think I regard them also as our frontliners. They have been um, helping and assisting households all over the country during uh, the pandemic, where it's very difficult for us to go out, or some people may not be keen to be out and about. So um, I think that's why you know the services of Grab Malaysia has been very key um, uh, to Malaysians and also you know, globally also from other organizations as well. Now, before I wrap up with one last question for all of our panelists, I'd like to remind the audience members, once again, if you have anything to ask, um, you can send me your questions through the Q&A uh, box. I see we already have some questions, but we'll attend to them um, at the end uh, before we wrap up. Now, one last question for all of our guest panelists. Now, 2021 is just around the corner. Um, there have been speculations on how the economy is going to take shape in the future. Um, Malaysia's GDP is expected to grow uh, between 6.5% and 7.5% next year after a contraction this year owing to the pandemic. So a strong rebound is anticipated. So my question for all our panelists here today, um, what do you think we can expect for the year 2021? Um, I would like to start out with Rickson. Okay. Um, well, I think from um, this is uh, my personal uh, perspective. Uh, when I look at it, um, I'm just assuming that uh, six months next year is going to be somewhat similar uh, to now, uh, and the second half is going to recover more. So, looking at uh, overall market um, recovering up to maybe seventy percent of pre-COVID level, um, there are three things that I believe uh, would uh, basically happen. Uh, the first one being uh, product and services that are accessible through online. Uh, the merchants uh, that are online or service provider that, that are online, uh, is they, they will be uh, mostly keeping a big portion of that. Uh, meaning um, those who are offline uh, waiting for the offline market to come back uh, may not get uh, as big as uh, they thought uh, even uh, if the market recovered. So uh, it is here to stay. People get used to it already. And then um, basically it's like the convenience is uh, somewhat outweigh uh, the, the, the benefit uh, that they get uh, inst uh, instead of going back to the, the, the old ways. Like that's what I'm saying. Uh, number two is that um, expectation on the, the, the products and services uh, that they get, that they actually uh, buy online, purchase online will be at all time high, uh, at least in the Malaysia context, because I think this year, uh, um, when everything is being forced to do online, or forced to uh, receive online, uh, people sort of like accept that 
it's okay. This is their first time. Uh, it's okay. They are transitioning in. But I think next year will be uh, the expectation will be at whoever that provide a better service, whoever that provide a smoother uh, uh, customer experience will actually win, win bigger. So uh, uh, I would say those who actually put a lot of effort to prepare this year will continue to win big next year. So uh, that's the second one. Uh, the third one is uh, I believe next year will be a bumper year for certain industries. Um, I think a lot of people been waiting, uh, basically like, it's okay, I don't, uh, the, the, the buying decision is like, uh, let's look at next year and see how next year look like. Yeah. Um, Wait but, and see approach, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the budget is already there. They, they, they have always been wanting to spend, but they were waiting, waiting and waiting. Uh, and therefore, next year, uh, they couldn't wait anymore and they will start spending and will start buying. And then those that are looking to wait will not wait as well because those who waited uh, this year doesn't seem to get anything different and end up they just buy it late. Uh, so meaning next year, uh, I would say uh, for certain industries, they will just make the decision in the same year. So next year, I believe will be a bumper year due to the uh, overflow from uh, this year. So uh, there will be certain industries that will be doing uh, much, much better uh, compared to this year. Yeah. All right, uh, Nase. Well, uh, I will agree that with uh, Rickson uh, for next year uh, because of uh, we believe that uh, starting as a um, the cashless solutions uh, or online solutions uh, will be one of the big things uh, going to happen. Uh, because of, for example, during this COVID, especially during uh, um, um, March and June, uh, people start to realize that okay, before this, they, they say that I, I don't mind to go to the shop physically to buy things, but during that period, they need to do online, purely online. There's no way that you can do it. So for next year, actually, uh, we can continue that this uh, um, trend. Uh, especially, we believe that by next year, the vaccine will be available for for the for COVID, and uh, hopefully, the border will be open up again. And uh, we can start travel again. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah. So meaning to say that uh, cashless solution and also maybe uh, remote uh, related services. For example, like uh, what things that we can do it uh, remotely. Uh, for example, it's not physically, but remotely. And also, I think um, services uh, that related uh, to the technology uh, that will be uh, uh, good uh, for for next year. Yeah. And uh, Abby. Well, from the Grab perspective, um, I think we see can we can see three trends emerging. One is uh, increased focus in uh, digitalization. Uh, Grab has a long term commitment in uh, digitalizing traditional and small businesses, and we want to ensure that they are included in the growing digital economy. So we will continue to work with government and partners to make sure no one is left behind. As we move into uh, the recovery period next year, we 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 will continue to drive digitalization. Uh, as we know and we see that people will continue to rely on digital channels to consume services, entertainment, and telework, working from home and whatnot. And COVID-19 has taught us that businesses must digitalize to survive and we can no longer place digitalization as an option. You either digitalize or die. Number two is the heightened awareness in hygiene and safety standards. Uh, we will continue to build the trust in embedding safety, hygienic uh, practices, and the thinking into our processes to ensure that uh, the safety standards is of optimum standard, whether it's with our delivery riders uh, or even our drivers or for our passengers as well. We must make sure that uh, everything must be on par to what we are offering. The safety and uh, hygiene standards must be of high standard. And just now, someone mentioned earlier about gig. Gig work it will be uh, has already been an integral part of the new economy or yeah. the new normal, or maybe we can even call it the the current normal. The gig economy model is here to stay. We will, I, I think, but the, the problem with gig is that no one understand or has defined it properly, whether it is with the government or with the industry. So we will continue to work with the government to ensure that uh, the 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 workers uh, or the partners in the in the gig economy are not left behind. We need to make sure that gig work is uh, is fair, inclusive, and sustainable for all. So uh, in order to all of to do all of this, partnerships will be key to us. We want to be an enabler. People have already said that Grab is a, 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 a dominant or even a monopoly because of the, the, the uh, earlier business deal and mergers. But in reality, uh, as we grow uh, into, a, into a firm that, that is actually uh, expanding our businesses, we want to be an enabler and we want to assist 
uh, the countries or the markets in actually growing their respective digital digital services. So uh, we we want to uh, to partner and be an enabler in in achieving this. We don't believe in building everything ourselves. So that's yeah. our our direction moving forward. Yeah, I think it's very important that we move together in solidarity as one. Um, and this yeah. fight against the pandemic is a global fight together. So it requires a concerted um, effort from all parties. So now I would like to go to our Q&A uh, box. We have some several questions already coming in. The first question I think I would like to pose to uh, both uh, Rickson and Asi. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who plans to open up a startup in 2021? Is there ever such thing as a bad time to start a company? Uh, Nase, perhaps. Okay, uh, so that's this interesting question. Uh, to to me, there's no such thing as bad time and good time because we also know that, for example, like there are also startups or, or, or unicorn that uh, was formed during the, the bad economy, uh, during the bad uh, time. So what most important thing actually, uh, yeah, I mean, for me personally, I would I would uh, encourage people to to uh, to do their, I mean, to create their startups, you know, uh, be it next year or whatever it is. But uh, the most important thing is actually uh, you need to get uh, yourself surrounded with the maybe uh, others uh, founders, uh, startup founders. You know, uh, you need to you need to uh, learn from them. You need to uh, maybe uh, chit chat with them, having coffee with them. Um, Try to learn from them, uh, um, so so to get more information. Uh, so, uh, secondly, actually, networking is very important um, because of uh, via networking. Actually, you you can have the uh, so called uh, the unofficial support system. For example, like if you have stuck somewhere else, you can uh, you can refer to some somebody else. If if you have solutions, maybe you can complement with others. You know, for example, if you are if your product still new in the market, how can we you work with uh, other uh, application or solution that we uh, that's already uh, matured? For example, like Grab, for instance. You know, you can you can have your your product in the Grab apps, for example. So this is something that you can look at. So uh, try not to say that okay, you are a startup and you cannot do things. But you 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 need to be. Um, you need to be uh, having a, a, a big um, um, mindset, I would say. You know, uh, so so um, I would encourage uh, to do you to do that. Yeah. Rickson. Yeah. Um, well, uh, in my opinion, uh, to start a company, it's uh, it's it's not really about uh, whether it's this year uh, or or next year is the right time. Uh, it's more like. Uh, whether the product offering, uh, regardless what that is, uh, are you offering it uh, at a timing where the demand will be around? So, uh, of course, during pandemic, there will be other uh, different type of uh, uh, product and services that will do well. Uh, or uh, basically what I'm trying to say is that when you launch it, are you actually on top of the bell curve uh, before it basically get that to or you are actually offering it a little bit earlier so that you have time to build up your name uh, and when uh, the timing for this particular industry to shine, you are somewhere there or somewhat there to catch the wave completely. So uh, basically, uh, it's more of uh, uh, identifying what you want to offer uh, versus uh, the development of the industry. Uh, I think that is a bigger question for them to consider rather than uh, whether, uh, I mean, uh, a general uh, uh, work off idea about whether this year or next year uh, is a good time to 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 start a company or not. Yeah. Rickson, you mentioned uh, earlier about the wait and see approach. Uh, but this next question, I'd like to throw to to Abby. Uh, it's it's in the Q and A box. It says here for companies and startups who want to embrace and provide solutions um, with the speculation of COVID nineteen vaccine coming means industries may operate at full capacity. So would it be wise to pivot or just wait? Uh, maybe I can ask Abby this. We have our vaccines coming, so it might cause some quarters to become complacent a bit, um, to not take perhaps digital transformation very seriously. They think that um, you know, things will get back to normal. 
Um, what's my your answer say? is no. My answer is no. You do not stay uh, 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 sit still and wait because we don't know. We we don't even know whether the vaccine will work. Right now, there's a lot of speculation. Uh, and if you wait, you will be left behind. I want to touch also on the points raised by both Rickson and and Nasi earlier on on uh, whether it's good for the startups to actually start their business now. I think the basis of starting a starting a company is actually. To what exactly that you want to do? Do you, are you? You need to solve a problem. There is a problem that is being faced right now, and the reason why you start something or some start a solution is actually to solve that problem. You can look at the, all the biggest startups in the world, even for Grab. Grab started because they wanted to solve the problems with taxi in Malaysia. Uh, Facebook started because Mark Zuckerberg wants to find girls, but it became something else. So you pivot while while you are on the a process of expanding and uh, facing all the challenges. It might be something now, but it might change to something different later. For example, who would know that mass uh, distribution or mass, um, uh, mass can be something so popular now, right? It, and it... And I think it is still early days. There so many things can can be well innovated with mass distribution or even development. So there's a lot of opportunities right now. Don't wait. Start to think of something or even look at the bigger picture and develop and and move it. Yeah. And of course, like what Nasi mentioned earlier, work with the, the your peers. Go into the, all these seminars, webinars, or even the communities. Captain is a good um, a founder group. I I mean I know the founder of Captain. He's a brilliant guy. Go into these communities and learn. And I think it's even in Cyberjaya, there are many, many uh, ecosystems that can support uh, new businesses. So it, it's all there. It's, it's, it's whether you are Rajin or even you you want to take the initiative to actually uh, uh, get this going. Yeah. I think in a nutshell, it's not about when's the right time to open up a business, but rather what are you offering? Um, are you looking at the demand? Are you meeting the demands of the people? That will determine the success rate. Now, before we end, there's one more question. This is coming from the chat box, actually. Um, this is for, for Rickson to answer. Um, this is from Tia. She's asking, is there any advice for fresh grads who are facing difficulties in landing a job in the current economy? Rickson. Uh, let me take a look at the question. <laughs> it's in the chat box. Yeah. Um... So I think we have um, some university students here watching today. I'm, I'm not too sure. Uh, okay, um, I'm, I'm not too sure about the context, uh, but generally because we are actively hiring, right? Uh, I think the the, the bigger problem, uh, the, the 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 key things that we look for is that uh, we are looking for someone that are willing to learn and able to learn fast and uh, basically committed. Uh, and with these three, uh, I think most most of the fresh graduate should be able to find a job. Uh, it's just that sometimes uh, we don't find fit, uh, even uh, when we lay down a very basic kind of uh, situation, uh, basic kind of requirement. Uh, mainly because uh, there are also some mismatch of expectation of uh, how a career should look like. Uh, so uh, that is more of. I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't say that uh, it will be difficult to find job right now uh, but it's more like whether they have aligned their expectation uh, well to to uh, what the employers are looking for yeah. and I think with the generation these days with Gen Z um they're very very tech savvy and they are quick to pick up and learn new things so I think they have that advantage uh, for them that it's just a matter of uh, what Abby mentioned whether you're Rajin enough you know to to acquire the skill that's needed. Um, in current times. We have a question also from Lokini. She's from a business today. We also have media joining us uh, online. She's uh, very interested about the captain group. This is the Cyberjaya uh, captain group. Um, is it a WhatsApp group? Was there any requirements? I think she wants to know about the, the collaboration um, that's happening in this uh, captain group. Maybe Nasi can, can just tell us a little bit about uh, how uh, you guys are in one community together. Okay, so yeah, the actually um, the idea of having this uh, captain group uh, was I think like uh, two years ago that uh, I mean the first time that we met uh, uh, Mara uh, for for to to get some advice or projects uh, or, or potential project with them. Then after that we 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 thought of okay. Why not we create this community? Uh, it's, it's a close community, uh, very small, like uh, maybe uh, 30 to 50 uh, founders company. Uh, together, uh, we can discuss uh, about, uh, about the, the, the entrepreneurship ecosystem. 
and we we can learn from each other. For example, like uh, especially during this COVID, you know, uh, I mean, we we can we we heard some of them say that they they have to uh, let go of their stuff. You know, they they have to um, uh, do salary cutting. For example, even for 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 us also uh, ourselves, uh, we we have cut uh, about more than sixty percent of the salary. So uh, and. How can we address the 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 um, the uh, maybe the mental issues, for example? You know, um, uh, so so we can mingle together. Uh, there's the, but uh, there's no uh, so-called official um, name for it or official organization. We just call ourselves as captain. And uh, once in a while we we had a gathering, uh, but because of this COVID, now we do it uh, on a virtual basis. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 uh, and for for me. I can uh, benefit of it because of uh, I can learn a lot of things uh, during this. Uh, uh, I mean, via this group. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Now, due to the interest of time, we don't have uh, more time to address uh, the other questions in the Q and A box. So we will uh, get to them offline. Thank you to our viewers and our audience members for all the questions that you have submitted. Uh, thank you to all our panelists. Uh, for being here today. This is the very last uh, Cyber View uh, Tech Talk for this year. Uh, thank you again to our viewers who tuned in today and with our current state of living with multiple SOPs to adhere to, I think we're here uh, for the long haul. This is our new normal. This is the normal. Uh, so even with vaccines coming our way, uh, the way we go about in our daily lives um, has taken a different route and has been embedded as the new way of living. I'm sure many business owners and entrepreneurs listening in today have found the conversation to be inspirational and a booster to move forward. Opportunities are always there, no matter the circumstance. It's just in the way on how we react, respond, and also uh, re-strategize that will determine our next state. So let's welcome 2021 with a confident vision that things will pick up and be better. With that, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last webinar by CyberView for 2020, but stay tuned as there's more to come next year with more, uh, with another great lineup of topics so with that, I'm Nadia signing off. Stay safe, happy holidays, and a happy new year. Thank you.